uh, usually when we run regression, sometimes your y or x could be in log, could be not in log. Right? So that so that y in log or not in log has two cases, right? Your x log x and not in log x or original x, right? Also two cases. So that two by two, we have four combinations, four cases in general, right? So let's let's study in each case. Each case, once we run a regression, once we have a beta hat, how do we use a sentence to interpret that beta hat? That's the first uh, issue. And third of all, second of all, which is uh, based on our beta hat, how do we further calculate something called elasticity? Because very often we care about elasticity. So that let's, first of all, calculate, you know, interpret beta hat. And second of all, you know, calculate our elasticity so that once we have elasticity, so similarly, we're gonna use a sentence to interpret that elasticity. So that, uh, let's start. Uh, model one, which is a y over x. In other words, none of them in log, none of them in log. Both of them are, are in, in their original form. For, for example, wage over education, right? None of them in log. Once we run the regression, we can have an estimate for beta, which would be called beta hat, right? So a natural question is, uh, how do we use a sentence to interpret that beta hat? For example, suppose computer give an answer, wage equals to say five plus uh, 10 times uh, education, right? So how do we use a sen sentence to interpret the coefficient, let's say 10, right? Or 50, or you know, uh, 0 0.5, whatever number that over there, right? So in order to, to figure that out, very simple. Let me show a little trick so that you never forget uh, how do we figure this out. The little trick is once you have a regression, once you have a regression, no matter log or not in log or you know, whatever, Let's both of both sides. Let's take difference so that left hand side will be change in y, right? Right hand side will be beta times change in x. Let me type. Uh, thank you. Let me type right here. Both sides. Let's take change. Left hand side. It will, it will become. Uh, where is my delta? I just use a capital D to stand for delta. dy equals to um, beta times dx. So where's my alpha? Because alpha doesn't change, right? So that when I take change, alpha is gone, right? <laughs> ignore error term, ignore error term. So that this equation, because alpha doesn't change at all, so that both sides, when I take change, Left hand side is change in y. I supposed to type a delta y because you know d is easier to type. So left hand side is a delta y. Right hand side beta times delta x, right? And because beta is a constant, I can put beta in front of the delta, right? So that this equation, if you take change, is change y equals beta times change x, right? So that I can simply divide change x to the left hand side so that I get this equation. Beta is change in y divided by change in x. Again, I simply divide change in x to the left hand side, right? So that I got this equation. Actually, actually, this equation is exactly the definition of slope, right? I recall the definition of slope. Slope will be when I have a slope something like this. So whenever x increases by one unit, how many units changes to, to y, right? So, so that's exactly the definition of slope, right? So that no matter which way you got your life, but anyway, we have this equation, beta is change in y divided by change in x. Once we have this formula, once we have this formula for beta, the sentence to interpret beta will be very, very straightforward. The se sentence will be, let's simply plug in you know, nominator, the bottom to be one. Let's plug in change in X to be one. Then change in Y will be simply beta, right? Again, let me repeat. Let's simply plug in one to be bottom. Let's pl plug in one right here. In other words, let's let change in X to be one. Then change in Y will be beta. 
right? So that's basically the sentence to interpret our beta. For example, suppose my equation is a wage over education. Suppose my equation is wage over education. For example, let me type somewhere right here. Suppose my, I got equation something like, uh, let me make up some numbers, uh, five plus say 10 times education. Suppose I run a regression, got to those kind of uh, numbers, right? So that uh, my beta is uh, right here, 10, right? So what's the meaning of this number 10? Yeah, right here, it's then change in X is one. Then change in Y is beta, right? So in my case, it's then education increases by one unit. Then wage increases by beta units. In my case, beta is 10, so that increases by 10 units, right? So let's replace the units uh, you know, by using the corresponding one because the units for wage must be dollars, right? The units of education must be how many years, right? So that a better sentence in my, in my case will be, then your education increases by one year. Then education increases by one year. Then wage, wage gonna increases by ten dollars, right? That's the that's the sentence to interpret my number. Uh, probably in reality, the your estimate will be much bigger than ten, right? <laughs> One more year education must be, you know, must at least more than ten dollars, <laughs> maybe one hundred, one thousand dollars, right? <laughs> but anyway, that's the example how to interpret your beta hat. Right, that's how to use a sentence to interpret your beta hat. Simply, simply plug in the bottom right here to be one, so that change in y will be simply beta. Right, so that's the little little trick. And so always, always remember this formula, and so that you you can always figure out the sentence. How do we remember this formula? Very simple. Let's both sides take change. Both sides take change so that you can divide change in x to the left-hand side so that you got to this equation, right? So that's a little trick. So that's the sentence to interpret my number beta hat, right? Let's further uh, talk about elasticity. Uh, first of all, what is elasticity? Why we care about elasticity? Uh, elasticity actually is a terminology we borrow from physics. In physics, uh, elasticity will be a terminology to describe different situations. For example, say you can say a basketball is elastic, right? Uh, or a spring is elastic, right? Something hard, let's say a rock or table, something like this, is inelastic, right? So what do they mean by elastic, inelastic? Elastic means if you give some pressure, then the response is large. Right? If you push a little bit, then the response will be big, right? Inelastic means if you give some pressure, if you push X, then the response is small or almost no response, right? That's the idea, elasticity. So that if the elasticity is large, for example, say, uh, if we calculate the number, say is five or three is on the first, then we say the elasticity is large so that the response is large, so that is elastic. If the elasticity, that number is small, say something like uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, less than one, hence I'll be called, this is inelastic. In other words, the response is small. The response is small. If the elasticity is exactly one, then we call it unit elastic, right? It means if you give some pressure in X, the response in Y will be basically again the same. In other words, if you change X by, say 100%, then the response in Y will be also 100%, right? Or similarly, you say, if you change X by 10%, the response in Y will be also 10%, right? So we call it unit elasticity. So that's the idea of elasticity. Economics people, we borrow this idea of elasticity to, to describe or to measure uh, the response uh, in term economic, for example, say price elasticity. Say price elasticity is uh, when we talk about, say, uh, the law of demand. In other words, when we change the price, 
Of course, people's demand kind of decrease, quantity de demand will be decrease, right? For example, say, if you talk about, say, uh, the the price of uh, uh, the price of Orlando, the, the Disney World, right? If I increase the price, then because of the law of demand, we would expect people, you know, people there kind of less. <laughs> we have less people go there, right? People demand less, right? But the question is, how much decrease, right? For example, say, so case number one, if we increase the price by 10%, that's case number one, suppose people love this new world so much so that, uh, yes, it decreases, but only decrease by a little bit or almost no, no change, right? So that we call it inelastic, no big change. In that case, if you are the if you were the boss, if you were the manager, then definitely my answer will be let's increase the price, right? <laughs> so, increase the price, but no big change in, in terms of demand. Why not make the price higher so that our revenue will be will be increased, right? So that's the first case if our demand is inelastic. Second case, suppose I increase the price by 10%. As uh, the result outcome will be, people say, people response will be, ah, oh, that's too expensive. Let's go to say Sea World instead, right? Let's go to <laughs> to, to see Shamu. Let's see animals over there, right? So that uh, they they don't come to Disney World anymore. They go to uh, they go to other places uh, instead. So that our our you know demand decrease a lot, decrease by say twenty percent. Price increased by 10%, but you know, our demand decreases by 20%. We lose a lot of customer, right? In that case, it's more like a basketball, more like a sprint. Very, very elastic, right? Response is very <laughs> sensitive to price change. In that case, even though my price, each ticket price is higher, but since I lose so many customers so that my total revenue decreases, right? That's why we really care about elasticity. I want to know people's demand is, is the first case or second case, inelastic case or elastic case, right? In other words, the elasticity, is that larger than one or smaller than one, right? That's the issue I really care about. Similarly, if you are a seller of, say, uh, gasoline, right? If a gas station, right? Uh, similarly, my, you know, the question in my mind is, uh, if I increase the price of gas, then what happens to people's demand, right? <laughs> if you can can't live without gas, right? Then probably if I, if you go to gas station, if you price a gasoline double so there, <laughs> what can I what can I do? I probably I still have to fill in tank. I still have to drive to work next day, right? <laughs> so so I still have to buy almost the same amount, right? If that's the case, then why not make the price higher? Right, <laughs> right. So, so that's that's why we care. Question. Uh, right. If uh, if I increase the price, people basically buy the same amount. Then that's inelastic. Basically, no big change. Right. Not very sensitive to to price change. More like a table like this. <laughs> no response. <laughs> so that's why we care about elasticity. Is that the larger than one, smaller than one? How large exa exactly it is, right? So, how, first of all, what's the formula of elasticity? The definition for elasticity is right here. It's a ratio on top on top it's it's change in y divided by y. At the bottom, it's change in x divided by x. Let's take a closer look. Change in y divided by y. What's this? Change in y divided by y. Let me give you some numbers so that you can see easily. For example, suppose y, suppose y, initially y is say uh, 100 and increases to say 120. 100 changes to 120. So the change in y, of course, their difference, which is 20, right? 20 divided by y, let's say original value, 20 divided by original y, 100, right? 
So of course, it's 20 divided by 100, which is 20%, uh, right? So did you see what's this formula trying to calculate? Change in y divided by y. Yeah. So, right, change divided by y. So that's, that's percentage change in y, right? So this formula, change in y divided by y, that's exactly percentage change in y. Right. That's why, for example, in my in my example, suppose y increases from one hundred to one twenty. Right. So the change, the difference is one is twenty divided by y. Original y is one hundred. Right. So change divided by original value of y, which is twenty percent. That's the percentage change in y. Right. So see, that's why in my formula on top, that's percentage change in y. Right. So similarly at the bottom. This is percentage change in X, right? So the definition for elasticity will be percentage change in Y divided by percentage change in X. For example, for example, suppose percentage change in X is 100%. As a response, percentage change in Y is also 100%. So that 100% divided by 100% elasticity will be exactly Y, right? In this case, elasticity. It's unit elasticity, right? Similarly, for example, suppose the bottom is again 100%, but on top is only 50% only change in Y, right? 50% divided by 100%, of course, the response will be one over two, uh, half, right? So, or one, 0 0.5, right? So that it's less than one, so that, so that it's inelastic. The, the result is less than one, right? Basically, basically the intuition is uh, when I increase my x 100%, the response in y will be kind of small, more like a table, more like a rock case, right? I give the pressure, but the response is small, right? Another example is, uh, again, if my the bottom is x, percentage change in x is 100%. But on top, the response is, say, 20, 200%, uh, right? It means when I increase the price by 100%, but the response in Y, which is, you know, <laughs> response by a lot, my 200%, right? Um, a lot. That's more like a basketball, more like a sprint, right? So of course, the ratio is 200% divided by 100%. The ratio is two, right? Which is larger than one, which is very elastic, right? So that... Uh, the intuition is that if I change the X by 100%, the, the Y, the response in Y will be a lot, very sensitive to my response, right? Very sensitive to my change, price change. So that uh, that's more like a basketball, right? So that's the idea, Elastic, elasticity. Basically, when I change X, for example, 10%, I want to see, I want to check out how much, you know, response in Y. Right, so that's the definition for elasticity. Now let's simplify this formula a little bit. So on top it's changing y divided by y. If I like, I can put y at the bottom right here, right? Because on top it's change y divided by y, right? So that I can put y on at the bottom right here. Similarly, x right here, it's change x divided by x. But don't forget. This is at bottom. This is at the you know the de denominator, right? So that x you know basically divided by twice. So that if you simplify, x will be goes to up right here, right? So that this formula, if you want to simplify, you can you know move x to on top right here, move y to the bottom right here, because again they're divided by y, divided by x. So that our elast elasticity could be rewritten into something like this. This formula, uh, if you're familiar with uh, you know, economics 101, if you take microeconomics, probably at that time, uh, the formula for price elastic elasticity directly given something like this. At that time, probably the formula will be change, change in Q times P divided by change in P divided by uh, times Q, right? At that time, what I'm trying to say is, uh, 
at that time, probably your formula, the textbook giving you is that the change in Q times P as a divided by, divide, oops, it is there, divided by change in P times Q, right? At that time, at that time, you know, your textbook directly gave you the formula, you know, change in Q times P divided by change in P divided by Q, right? So <laughs> where does that formula come from? Actually, exactly come from here. So anyway, that's the idea for elasticity. That's the formula. So uh, we mentioned a lot already. But anyway, that's the definition for elasticity. No matter you want to use the original one or use this one, that's the definition for elasticity. A question. Uh, we use a cutting off a, a one to, 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 to measure. If larger than one, we call it elastic. If a smaller than one, it's inelastic. <laughs> so that's why you use a one to do the cutting off. <laughs> if it's exactly equal to one, we call it unit elastic. <laughs> uh, of course, we talk about in terms of absolute value. In other words, if uh, elasticity is uh, negative two, then you know that it, it, that's the case. Uh, same same case, a uh, positive two, uh, larger than one. Uh, anyway, so far we introduced a formula for elasticity. Let's compare this formula with our beta hat. Our beta right here, we just mentioned in our in our regression, it's change in y divided by change in x, right? So in, in the formula of elasticity, uh, the beta head is exactly the first term, right? Change in y divided by change in x. This is our beta, right? So that from this regression model, elasticity could be calculated based on beta, times x and then divided by y so that we, we can calculate our elasticity, right? For example, in our example, beta, suppose it is 10. You need further use 10 times x and then divided by y so that we can calculate elasticity. Right here, xi, yi, in, in other words, we have so many x, so many y's, right? So which x and which y shall we use? In practice, to make it simple, you can, you can replace this guy by using x bar. You can replace this guy by y bar so that, so that you use beta hat times x bar divided by y bar so that you can calculate your elasticity. For example, in my regression, in my regression, my beta hat, for example, suppose is 10. So I need to use a 10 to times x bar. x is my education, right? so that I, I need to check out what's the average education in my example. I'll show you in a second how to find it out. Actually, whenever you, as a very beginning, whenever you summary your data set, summary parentheses data, right? Actually, the, you know, you can always find out the average, you know, the mean, median, the minimum, so on and so forth. For each variable, you can find out the, the mean <laughs> over there, right? But anyway, I, I'll show you, show you an example in a second. Uh, so that you can find out the average x, right? In my case, I need average education, right? For example, let's say, suppose my education is a uh, minimum is, is 10, maximum, let's say 20, average, uh, let's say 15, right? So in my case, I need to plug in 15 right here, right? Bottom divided by y bar, y is my wage, right? Suppose in my data set, the minimum, uh, I don't know, maybe, say uh, 100, maximum, let's say 1,000, average somewhere, let's say 500. So I plug in 500, right? So that I plug in those numbers so that I calculate, simplify, so that I get a number. So once you calculate a number, for example, suppose I beta hat times x bar divided by y bar, suppose I after simplification, I got a number, let's say 0 0.5. Then that number is my elasticity. How do you use a sentence to interpret your elasticity? Very simple, very simple. Again, suppose my elasticity is a 0 0.5. Then the sentence to interpret my 0 0.5 elasticity will be, 
if my x increases by 100%, right? Then, in other words, 100% is one, right? Then the, the, the percentage change in y will be my, my elasticity, for example, 0 0.5, right? 0 0.5, of, of course, 50%, right? So that the, the, my wage response will be 50%, right? In my case, suppose my elasticity is a 0 0.5, then the sentence will be, if my increase my education by 100%, right? Then my wage gonna increase by 50%, right? That's why 50% divided by 100%, that's why the ratio is 0 0.5, right? So that's the sentence to interpret my elasticity. So that's uh, in my model number one, a regression y over x. First of all, how do we interpret the number, for example, because suppose computer says beta hat is 10. How do we use a 10 sentence to, to interpret the number 10, right? We, you know, basically we always use as a sentence. You always use this sentence. Whenever X increases by one, then change in Y will be beta units, right? And so second of all, we introduce how do we calculate elasticity? Elasticity, the formula is right here, right? This is a definition of elasticity. The definition always this. So that uh, since just now, beta hat is right here, the first part. So that compare beta hat and elasticity. So that we know we need to use a beta times x divided by y so that we calculate elasticity, right? In practice, replace x and y by their average. Any questions uh, for this model one? So, <laughs> so if uh, if you're good for model one, then we're gonna move on to model two, model three, model four, because we're gonna introduce four different uh, combinations, four different cases, right? So, uh, sure. Let's uh, let's find the regression. Uh, I'm trying to find a regression. We can run the regression very quickly. Let's say, what variables do we have? Let's run the regression using, for example, uh, weeks or working experience, for example. So let's, let's run the regression. Weeks or EXP. So that computer give us coefficient negative 0 0.05, right? That's the beta. So first of all, if you want to use a sentence to interpret this number, negative 0 0.05, then that's that's change in y divided by change in x, right? So the sentence will be, if your x increases by one unit, your y kind of increases, actually decreases by this much, right? Because this is negative, right? So in this example, in this example, my x is a working experience. How many years of working experience, right? My y will be weeks, how many, uh, how many weeks did you work, right? Work in weeks. <laughs> and so in this example, the coefficient is negative 0 0.05. So that the sentence will be, if my working experience increases by one year, right? So that as a result, my weeks gonna decreases by 0 0.05 weeks, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's a, uh, that's a little example to illustrate this idea. So how do you further calculate elasticity? This is our beta hat we already have right here, right? The formula says, the formula says, you need beta hat times x bar, times x bar, and divided by y bar, right? Times x bar, divided by y bar. As in my example, 
times x bar. x bar is a average of exp, right? Exp, where is it? Exp average is right here, 22.85, right? And my weeks average is right here, 46, right? So, so that uh, in our example, our elasticity will be this number, beta hat times x bar. Uh, let me copy and paste. x bar, and then divide by y bar. Y is WKS. Right here. So our elasticity is a negative 0 0.025, right? So that, so that if you want to use a sentence to interpret this elasticity, it's my, when I x increases by 100%, my y is going to decrease by, move the decimal, there'll be 2.5%, right? 2.5%. That's why 2.5% divided by 100% equals to this number, right? So is it clear how, how did I calculate these numbers? So that uh, that's our model one. Model two, now it's log y over x. For example, log wage over education. Suppose wage in log now. Suppose log wage over education. So first of all, then computer calculate the beta hat. How do we use a sentence to interpret the number beta hat, right? And so I, again, I'll show you the little trick so that uh, you never forget. You can always do it by yourself. So first of all, for this regression, for this equation, again, ignore UI, ignore error term. Both sides, let's take change. Both sides, let's take change. And the so left-hand side, it will be change in log Y, right? Change in log Y. Right-hand side, alpha doesn't change, so it's gone. And he, he, it's canceled, right? And right-hand side is a beta times change in X, right? Change in beta X equivalent to beta times change in x, right? So left-hand side, change in log y. Right-hand side, beta times change in x, right? So that I divide change in x to the left-hand side so that I got the equation equal to this. Is it clear where they come from? <laughs> okay, it's left-hand side is change in log y. Right-hand side, beta change in x so that they divide divide change in x to the left-hand side so that I have change in log, log y, change in log y divided by change in x, change in x, so that I actually beta, right? So I got this kind of formula. This formula, if you focus on this formula, it's something like if my x increased by one unit, in other words, if change in x is one, then what's beta? Beta is change in log y, right? For example, for example, you might answer something like, uh, when my education increases by one unit, my log wage gonna, gonna change by beta units, right? <laughs> First of all, technically speaking, in term math, it is correct. But, but uh, frankly speaking, it's, this is not a very good way to interpret your result because if you tell your boss, uh, you know, your log wage kind of increases by, for example, two. <laughs> your boss is like, gosh, what does that mean, right? <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you mean by log wage increase by two. <laughs> it's not a very good way, not a very intuitive way for me to figure out. You have to tell me what happens to my wage directly, right? So, so let's, let's convert this, uh, you know, log, changing log y, log y into something more info, intuitive. So, so right here, I rewrite the top part a little bit. I rewrite change in log into change y divided by y. In other words, first of all, trust me, change in log always the same as percentage change. Change in log always the same as percentage change. Let me prove it for you. Let me prove it for you. So uh, recall, recall what's the derivative function of log? 
What's the derivative of log function? Still remember? Oh, very good. <laughs> For example, what's the derivative of log x? Very simple. One over x, right? Very good, right? So that the you know notation we write down at that time will be probably at that time it will be little d log y divided by d y, right? That's the notation of derivative, right? Equals to one over y. That's the notation of uh, basically the derivative of log function, right? At that time, you know, when you when we learn derivative, you use a little d. Right here, I use a big delta, but the meaning exactly the same. D means a change, right? So no matter you use a little d or use my my delta, we stand for exactly the same thing. Change in log divided. Uh, question? Yeah, I got a question. So I, I think the the power notation would be for natural log. It would be. Um, Natural log of x. Yeah, yeah. X. Natural log. So is log natural log or is it log base ten? Uh, right here it's the the same notation ln. So in this course, actually, whenever you know, whenever you see log, no matter you ln or log or lg, whatever notation, actually in this course we always mean the natural log. As a probably only only when we learn math. We learn so many different versions. Uh, you know, uh, use a use ten as base, base use a e as base, use a use a different base. But actually, <laughs> once you finish uh, learning that course, actually everybody uses natural log. So, so <laughs> that's why, for example, if you use R by default, whenever you use command log, and so that's natural log, right? So uh, again, we we, are, we mean natural log. Question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, no matter you use a delta or you use a little d, we mean change in that function. So, <laughs> so, so the definition of a, a, the derivative of log function is a d log y divided by little d y i is one over y i. That's you know that's something we learned before. The derivative of log function, right, is a one over y. So that once you have this equation, simply multiply, simply move change in y to the right hand side simply move you know change your y to the right hand side so that we we got the equation change in log y simply equals to change in y divided by y right see the little trick is simply move change in y to the right hand side move to, to right here right multiply to both sides multiply by change in y so that we got this equation so that we proved change in log is always percentage change. Right-hand side is percentage change, right? So that's the beauty of a change fun a log function. In other words, whenever you change the log function a little bit, that's exactly the percentage change in y. <laughs> so if the proof confuses you, just ignore the proof. But simply trust me, trust me, you know, this conclusion, change in log is always percentage change in y, right? So once you know this, the interpretation will be better. For example, let's say, so once we have a beta, once we have a beta, let's say log weight, for example, equals to beta times your education. Let's let's use an example. Let's say, suppose, suppose we run the regression and we got, we got log uh, weight equals to say five plus, uh, make up a number. Um, uh, 20, 20 might be too large. <laughs> Let's say 0 0.2. Uh, yeah, that's probably, that's probably times education. For example, suppose our computer give us a number of something like this. Suppose a computer give a result, a beta is a 0 0.2. Then how do we interpret this number 0 0.2? 0 0.2 will be plug in the number right here. If your x increased by one unit, right? You know, again, if e change in x is one, then the percentage change in y is beta, right? In my example, change in x is change education, right? Education increased by one year, right? Then beta is percentage change in y. Beta is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is percentage change in wage. In other words, 
the percentage change in wage is a 0 0.2. Percentage change is 0 0.2. 0 0.2, of course, which is 20%, right? So that a better way to put it is a wage kind of increases by 20%, right? Then your education increases by one year, right? Again, let me repeat. If your education increases by one year, right? As a result, your percentage change in wage, percentage change in wage is 0 0.2, which is 20%, right? That's the corresponding, you know, you know, interpretation, right? Do not, do not say something like uh, my log wage increases by 0 0.2, right? <laughs> Although it's mathematically speaking, it's correct, but it's not, uh, it's not a correct way for us to interpret this number, right? So <laughs> if uh, during the exam, if you, if you say something like log wage increased by 0 0.2, then sorry, <laughs> my TA gonna, <laughs> gonna count it to be wrong, right? <laughs> it's not a good way for us to interpret <laughs> our result, right? You have to, you have to interpret something like, uh, you know, wage increase by 20%, right? Uh, is it clear so far? Okay, let's continue. Elasticity. Model two, we only interpret the beta head so far. Let's talk about elasticity. The formula for elasticity is always right here. Percentage change in y divided by the percentage change in x, right? This is always the formula for elasticity. Let's compare our elasticity, uh, compare versus our beta. Beta, if you, if you look at it, it's a change in y divided by y. Bottom is a change in x. This is, let me draw it. This is right here, right? This part is our beta, right? Again, in, in our formula elasticity, the part I circled is our beta, right? So that in other words, once we have beta, once we have beta, we only need to, to adjust, you know, adjust the, the very last term x so that we have our elasticity, right? If you take a closer look, you know, divided by x, it's as the denominator, right? Denominator, we have a divide once, divide twice, so that you can move x to, 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 to top, right? In other words, this is our beta. This is our beta. You can use a beta times x so that you have your elasticity, right? Uh, beta times x so that you have elasticity. In my example, for example, say, suppose beta is a 0 0.2, so that I need to multiply by x bar. x bar is average of education. For example, suppose in my data set, uh, education on average is a 15 years education, right? So I use 15, multiply my 0 0.2, so that I have, a, I have a result. Once I have a result, that's my elasticity. So that once you have elasticity, you can interpret that number as, as the same way as before, right? So that, uh, uh, actually, let's do the exercise together. Suppose, suppose x bar is 15, I make up some number. Suppose my x bar is 15, so that in my example, beta is a 0 0.2. 0 0.2 times x bar, x bar again, suppose education on average is a 15 years education, right? 15, so that uh, uh, the result, uh, let me see, three, yeah, exactly three, right? Yeah. <laughs> it is correct. So elasticity equals to three. Uh, it's larger than one, so that the result is very elastic, right? So what's the sentence to interpret to the elasticity? And so since the, and so the formula will be very simple. You always plug in the bottom right here to be 100%, and interpret how, what's the percentage change in your y, right? In our case, if elasticity, for example, equals to three, then the sentence will be, when x increases by 100%, as a result, my y can increase by 300%, right? So 300% divided by 100%, that's why e equals to three, right? Elasticity, right? So in my example, education increases by 100%.
Then as a result, wage gonna increase is by 300%, right? That's that's the corresponding sentence, right? So uh, any question so far, that's our model two. It uh, becomes a little bit complicated now, right? <laughs> model one, model two. Depends on what kind of model you need to figure out how to be interpret beta and then how to calculate elasticity, how to interpret elasticity, right? So far, we talk about two different models. If you're clear, then move on to model three. Model three is now Y, original Y, but X in log. It's something like uh, log uh, no, no, wage equals to something times uh, log education, right? <laughs> log education. So first of all, interpretation of beta, same trick, same trick. Let's both sides like take change. Both sides let's take change. Change y, change in y equals to beta times change in log x, right? So that so that you divide change in log x to the left hand side. So that the formula is a beta is change in y divided by change in log x, right? Everybody follows me in the little trick right? so that I calculate this formula. So still remember, change in log is percentage change, right? Change in log is percentage change. So that in this case, in this case, I, the formula is a beta hat is change in y divided by percentage change in x, right? That's a formula. For example, let's make up some numbers. Uh, uh, suppose. Suppose I run the regression. Uh, uh, how large it will be? Uh, um, probably large. Let me make up something like 100 times log education. Suppose I run the regression, get to this kind of number, right? And so my x is in log. Now, always plug in the bottom right here to be one. Plug in, plug in the bottom right here to be one. Let me, let me circle. The little trick is always plug in one to be here to, to make it easy, right? If you plug in one right here so that a beta is change in y, right? So let's do it. If the bottom right here is one, note that this is a percentage change in x. Right? Percentage is one. One is 100%, right? In other words, it will be then, then X increases by 100%. Equivalently, right here is increased by one, right? So beta is the, is the change in Y, right? So in my case, let's see. Suppose education increases by 100%, right? Suppose Education increased by 100%, so that right here, 100% is is right here, right? 100% is one, right? Uh, actually, strictly speaking, depends on your current value. But you can you can think about, for example, starting from average, something like a, <laughs> starting from 15 increased by, you know. So then X increases by 100% then beta will be increased value of y, right? Beta will be changing y, right, right? So that in my case, beta is 100, right? 100 will be change in y, change in wage. In other words, change in wage is 100. In other words, wage increases by $100, right? Don't forget the units, $100, right? Let me repeat, when, when x, increases by 100%. In other words, bottom right here, 100% is one, plug in one right here, right? Then change in Y will be beta. In my case, change in wage will be 100, right? And so that better put it is a uh, wage increases by $100, right? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> so that's why it depends on different model. You need to figure out what's the what's the right way to if, to figure the to figure out what's the sentence, right? This is beta. Let's see elasticity. Elasticity, the formula is right here. You know, the my beta, my beta 
this part in my formula is right here. This is my beta, right? See, change in y divided by change in x over x, right here. This is my beta right here, right? So that, in other words, if you want to calculate elasticity, my beta slash divided by y, so that I have my elasticity, right? For model three, beta divided by y, so that I have my elasticity, right? For example, in my, in my example, my beta is 100. My beta is 100. So that uh, I need, uh, I need to use a 100 divided by y. In practice, plug in by y bar, average of a wage, right? For example, suppose, suppose your wage, average wage is uh, $500. Right? So that we have a we have the result one over five, which is a twenty percent zero point two or twenty percent, right? And so either way, zero point two or twenty percent, right? So that once you have the you know, actually let me let me make a complete zero point two or twenty percent. Once you have the result zero point two, so that the sentence elasticity will be. As if your x increases by 100%, your y, your y gonna increase by 20%, right? So that you can verify 20% divided by 100%, so that the ratio is 0.2, right? You can always uh, verify this. So that uh, that's always uh, the little trick to, to interpret beta, to calculate elasticity, interpret elasticity. So depends on different model. And so the formula always different. So my suggestion is uh, I don't want you to memorize the formula because uh, there are too many different cases, right? So that uh, my suggestion is uh, we always uh, simply remember the little trick. And so both sides, given whatever model, both sides simply take change. So that divide the you know change x to the left hand side, so that you have the expression beta equals to something, right? Based on the formula beta, so that you can always interpret accordingly. And uh, whenever you want to calculate elasticity, always remember the original formula for elastic elasticity, which is a percentage in y divided by percentage change in x, right? Compare elasticity versus your beta. So that you know how do we how do you know how do we need further modify either maybe multiply by x or divide by y so that you have your elasticity right so that's the, my suggestion how you know to calculate that's my model three any question for uh, either way. Either way, so uh, either way, for example, you can either report elasticity is a 0 0.2 or say elasticity is a 20%, either way, you know, <laughs> as a, uh, when, you, when you want to compare, compare versus one, then probably 0 0.2 will be easier, right? Because from theory, we know if the elasticity is a larger than one, that's very elastic. If it's smaller than one, Inelastic, right? Equals to one unit elastic. That's why for probably if you want to compare to versus one, maybe 0 0.2 will be will be more intuitive. Right. Let's move on to very last very last case. Log y over log x. Last case. Log y over log x. Let's do the same trick. Both sides, let's take change. So that we have change in log y equals to beta times change in log x, right? So that, so that let's move change in log x to the left-hand side. So that we have beta is change in log y divided by change in log x, right? So that we have this formula, right? Still remember, change in log is percentage change, right? So that on top, we can rewrite, rewrite into percentage change in y. Bottom, you can rewrite into percentage change in x, right? So the first of all, beta, you can rewrite into something like this. This formula looks actually really, really nice because this is exactly the formula of elasticity, right? 
In other words, this is a good news in the sense, if you run the regression log y over log x, beta hat is exactly, you know, <laughs> is already over elasticity, right? So that you don't have to further calculate elasticity. Beta hat is already elasticity, right? <laughs> That's why, you know, very often people want to run the regression log log because a uh, coefficient, a log log coefficient is already elasticity so that you, <laughs> so that you don't have to further calculate, <laughs> convert into elasticity, right? <laughs> so that's a good news, <laughs> right? So that's why, that's why, for example, in our homework, uh, for example, right here, actually, let, let me, let me show you our, Textbook example, chapter three. Our textbook example, when we run the regression, log C, log consumption, our log price, right? C log log, right? So the coefficient is negative 1.19. This number is exactly elasticity. Right, already, already elasticity between C and V, right? First of all, it's larger than one. It means a very elastic, right? So that, so that you know, basically means our consumption is very sensitive to price change, right? So that if you want to use a sentence to interpret that one, you know, percentage change in P, when percentage change in P is 100%, when price increases by 100%, Right, the response in consumption will be you're gonna decrease this by 1.19. In other words, 119 percent. Right, 1.19 is 119 percent. Right, so so that that's the that's the sentence again. If your price if your price increases by 100 percent, if your price increases by 100 percent. Then consumption gonna decrease by one one nine percent, right? More than more than one hundred percent, right? So uh, you know that's a that's a very elastic result, right? Very sensitive, very sensitive to price change, right? So that's our model four. So that uh, so that our model four very good news because if you run a log log regression, the beta hat is elasticity, right? That's why this is a log, log, you know, very popular in practice because no further calculation, right? So that's why for our homework, uh, right here, for our homework, question number two, last time I told you when we run such a regression, log consumption over log income, as computer gonna give you a coefficient, uh, homework question asks you to, What's the estimated income elasticity? Last time I told you it, it is simply the coefficient of uh, L and Y. Uh, the reason now we know the re what's the reason why, right? Because because of the coefficient right here is log C over log income. It is uh, the then your income increased by one hundred percent. What happens to your percentage change in you know, your consumption, right? That's because that's exactly a log log regression. Right, the coefficient is elasticity. It's income elasticity. Right, <laughs> that's the reason why last time I told you the coefficient is elasticity. Right, so um, that's the four different models. Any questions so far? Four different cases. So. The textbook didn't uh, discuss this in detail. Textbook simply, you know, use a log-log regression and told you the coefficient log-log is elasticity, right? Uh, the, the textbook didn't discuss uh, this in detail. What if I use a y over x? Then what should I do for, to, to calculate elasticity? Now I showed you everything, all the details, right? So uh, again, I don't want you to memorize uh, the formula as a conclusion. Just uh, follow me, uh, follow the little trick, take change both sides and uh, convert beta is something divided by something. And then compile, compare your formula beta, compare versus elasticity, see what kind of uh, trick to, to further 
either divided by something, times something, or you know, so on and so forth. Okay, that's the. Uh, let's take a break. Uh, uh, in ten minutes, so let's come back and continue. Continue. We already finished this chapter.